Hello and welcome. Today I'll show you how to get started using the Godo editor. Don't worry, this isn't a tutorial where you have to write code and stuff, so you can feel free to relax and just remember what goes on in the video. If you forget, just save this video and you can come back later, no worries. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So first to download Godo, you want to either click the Godo engine link or the Godo engine.net link. If you're looking to code in C sharp, you want to click this. But it is in Godo 3, so it might not be a good idea to do that. However, if you want to do anything else, use click the top link. It's for Godo 4. And once you've downloaded that, you will come to this folder. So you want to click on the first link or the first file. It should have the bigger size than the second one. And once you've got to this screen, we will have our project screen. So because I've done some other things here, you won't have all of these projects, but to create a new one, we select new project, we type in whatever folder name we want, we browse where we want to save it. So documents is the default path, but, and then we click that create folder thing. I've already done it for this one. So I'm just going to choose this one. So first thing, nodes are basically fundamental building blocks of any game that you make. There are dozens of different kinds of nodes that do all different things. Some can act as a camera, they can render a 3D object, or they can play, thing, play a sound. All nodes also have the following characteristics. They all have a name. They all have editable properties. They all receive callbacks to update every frame. That just means in the context of de game development that they all get updated in real time, like through the, the frames. And then you can also add them to another node as a child. And the last characteristic is important. So together, nodes form a tree, which is a powerful feature to organize projects. Since different nodes have different functions, combining them produces more complex behavior. Basically, what a tree means is a series of nodes as basically children of each other. So first off, we're just going to show this in 2D. If we create a node 2D here, we can see that it's switched to our 2D editor. So by default, we're on our 3D editor. We can see, look around here, it's in 3D. But once we add anything that's 2D, it switches straight to our 2D editor. So let's name this one our world. This is going to be basically the root node of the project. The root node means it's the top most node of the project. And then as we add more nodes, let's say, let's add a, let's add a label. We add more nodes the tree like structure you see you can see each one of these branches each one of these lines is a branch of the tree so it's all to do with trees uh even though it's not actually a tree let's also add a sprite as well so to use to kind of demonstrate the way you can edit in Godo, the right hand panel is our inspector you can also click node to change the signals of it but that is a bit advanced for now so if we want to change something, uh, change some properties of the node, we can type in what we want. So I'm just going to type in hello. Let's just do a normal sprite because the animated sprite is a little different. We can see here the texture. Let's, let's just drag that in there. So now we've just edited one of the properties. If we want to undo, we can click that and it basically reverts it to default. But we don't want to do that. We want to make it look like it's got something there. So let's just drag that into the middle. And you notice this little box, this box basically shows us what the player is going to see on the screen. Once we've all organized nodes in a tree like this, you can call this a constructed scene. Even though we haven't saved it, which we will do now, let's just save it as our world scene. We've just created a scene right there. So it's, once you save it, the scenes basically work like new node types in the editor, where you can add them as a child of an existing node. In that case, the instance of the scene appears as one single node with the internals hidden. Let's just show what this means through creating an example. If you want to create some properties, let's say uh, to our sprite, let's also add a label to our sprite. Since we know what labels are going to do, let's also do a different one. Let's create that as a child of the sprite and name it uh, sprite label. So I'm also spelling it very wrong but i'm also showing you how to rename things you just double click it or you can uh, right click on anything and there's all these options to do it let's also name this sprite so we know lo what we're looking at as you can see here we're not seeing anything why you might ask is because the way that control nodes work you need to set the i guess dimensions of them 
if we do this like full rectangle, we can see it grows to the absolute width of the parent. So if this was a child of the world, it would the box would be as big as that screen. But since it isn't, it's only as big as that. So if we want to demonstrate how scenes work as instances, we can save branch as scene, just save it as that. Um, now let's delete it. Oh no, where's it gone? That's right, we have saved it already. We just drag it back in and it's good as new, basically the exact same thing. We can drag multiple of it. We can drag as many as we want and it doesn't matter. This is the beauty of using scenes instead of just using nodes because if we just did it like nodes before, we would have like so much more. It gets more complicated as you go deeper into game depth. Next up, we are going to save the world scene. To actually show how the world is going to be run, we want to click the play button at the top right. Then, since we see no main scene has ever been defined, select one. Basically, we want to select the current scene because it, we know it's going to be our main scene. What this does it, it, is it tells Godot that we're going to be using this scene as our boot up screen. So, if this was a main menu, this would be a very good screen to start off with. But since we're just testing it out, we just want to only see this. So we can see everything we've added. We can see the little hello in the top left and then all the sprites that we've added. So next we'll be looking at scripting. Don't worry, we're not going to actually code. We're just going to explain how scripting works in Godot. Scripts are files containing code that you attach to a node to extend its functionality. Godot supports four official scripting languages, which are C, C++, C Sharp, and of course, GDScript. So GDScript is kind of the default one. It has the biggest support. It is supported for Godot 4, which is the most recent one as of this recording. However, C Sharp is only supported up to Godot 3, so it's kind of limited. C++ and C are basically uh, similar to GDScript, except you need to install an extension to make them work. First, you can also mix the languages in your project. You don't have to use all of one. So for instance, if you want to implement like an algorithm, you could use C or C++ since it runs quite faster than GDScript and then write most of your other games logic using GDScript. Basically, GDScript is a object-oriented and imperative programming language built for Godot. It's made by and for game developers to save you time coding games. The features of GDScript include simple syntax that leads to short files, fast compilation and loading times. Compilation basically means when you click the run button at the top uh, right, it just basically runs quite fast. It's also got very uh, neat ed editor integration, so it's very supported. If we just quickly show how supported it is, let's just attach a script we, by clicking that button and then let's click create. So this is gonna be on our worlds. We're creating a script. Basically all this is what comes up with when we create a new script. The ready is what you can see here. It runs when the game is played and process is when it runs every game. So this is when I was talking about nodes can be run through the games in terms of game development. This is the function that does it and ready just does it when you click, when you click play basically. Anyways, if we type in anything, this is how good GD script is. I'm just gonna type in the letter A. We can see all of these things and let's just choose one of them. Now by holding control and clicking, we can get all this information that we've never known before about this random thing that we just typed in. So you may be asking, this looks very similar to Python if you already know it, so why don't we just use Python? Well, basically it's a bit complicated, but before they did use Python, it actually took a lot of integration and a lot of work and it had lots of limitations. So it just really wasn't worth it. For example, like threading support was a big challenge with Python. So next, C Sharp. To use C Sharp, you must download the .NET thing I was mentioning earlier. And projects written in C Sharp using Godot 4 onwards are currently cannot be exported to Android, iOS, and web platforms. So if you do want to do with C Sharp, you can't really uh, export it to web platforms and Android so it's not recommended to do it. You should just do uh, Godot 3 if you want to use C Sharp. And then finally C++ via the GD extension. So you have to install an extension first but basically the GD extension allows you to write game code in C++ without needing to recompile Godot. 
the GD extension is the best choice for performance and you don't need to use if it's like throughout an entire game so you can write other parts in GD script or C sharp as I mentioned before and then finally when working with GD extension the available types functions and properties are quite close to Godot's actual C++ API and that's all for today so basically we've looked over our main features main features we've looking at is our tree here adding nodes using that little plus there we can also see all of our saved files at the bottom left and then over on the right is our properties our inspector uh, changes all the nodes properties below is going to be our output screen debugger and all the other like audio animations that we'll get into later on but this is a very quick tutorial also wanted to mention that when I was adjusting the label there's also all of these other options so for scale you can just adjust the scale and whatnot anyways that's gonna be all for today thank you so much for watching until here I hope this tutorial has been informative hope you've enjoyed make sure that if you did enjoy like the video I guess and if you really enjoyed and want to see more of my stuff subscribe because it does mean a lot to me so anyways enough babbling about that about that stupid youtuber stuff um i'll see you in the next video see ya